All right, everyone. This is Rajneesh Gupta, and with me, um, uh, Jamin Pathak is here. He's security consultant and trainer at Hexcam. Hello, Jamin. Hello, Rajneesh. So we are going to do the mock interview again, and uh, this is going to be useful for SOC analyst and security analyst. So let me give you the format of the of the of the interview. Uh, Jamin will ask me a question. He he is going to be the interviewer, and I'll be the interviewee. And he will ask me questions, and based on my answer, he might ask some counter questions as well. At the end of the video, I'll give you the detailed answer to the interview question. All right, all good. Let's get started. Hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, Rajnish. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, you're welcome. So let's begin. So Rajnish, my first question is about incident response. What is the incident response? Sure. So incident response is is a uh, is a process. It's it's actually focused on uh, responding and uh, resolving security related incidents um, when that that's already have been occurred. Okay. So it's majorly handled by the software two team because they are involved in the incident response. So um, let me tell you this way: uh, the software one basically in uh, focus on security monitoring, performing the initial triage, uh, looking at the false positive, and uh, they they also do the uh, you know threat intelligence lookup. But if it required to have a further investigation. And if it is a valid incident and a major incident, probably they create an incident that and uh, they create an incident on tools like ServiceNow or an, another ITSM tool and assign that incident to the SOC tier two team or DFIR team or incident response team. So that incident comes to the SOC tier two team and then they start resolving them. If it's a malware, then they can. Uh, uh, they can follow certain framework. It's a uh, uh, the the framework uh, are are designed by majorly two organization NIST and SANS. So NIST has their own framework, which uh, goes from preparation, detect detection, contamin containment, eradication, recovery, learning. Uh, similar to that, we have a SANS framework as well. Okay, so. Uh, uh, if it's a malware, it start with they they contaminate uh, the con they contaminate it. They isolate the system from the network. Then they eradicate the malware, and then we we try to recover the system back to the network as well. And then we create the reports. Uh, based on my experience, I work with multiple incidents. So I work with the responding or resolving uh, uh, security incident related to malware outbreak. Uh, related to the brute force attack, related to PowerShell related uh, uh, security alerts, some unauthorized attempt. Um, I majorly work with the Windows Defender EDR tool to look at those alerts, to perform the investigation uh, of malwares and uh, performing some level of th threat hunting as well. So that's what my experience with the incident response. So yeah. Okay, great. So looks like you have a good amount of experience on handling incidents. So how do you prioritize those incidents? So uh, yeah, uh, so basically, uh, whenever uh, whenever there are some incidents, uh, and I feel it depends on the organization as well. Uh, every organization they have their own approach in prioritizing the incident. So in uh, in our in in the in the uh, moment that I work with, the the high priority incident is uh, considered based on the urgency and based on the asset value as well. Or uh, sometime if it has been created by the user or anybody in any uh, any other department, so they can also assign the priority of the incident. So uh, you know, so when you say about low impact uh, incident, so that might be related to a mi minor. A malware outbreak, uh, or uh, maybe a brute force attempt, maybe login failed alert. When we talk about the high impact incident, it could be related to 
um, incident that that is impacting high value asset okay or maybe it's a uh, it's an assured or uh, high confidence alert maybe denial of service attack which has been identified or maybe malware okay so most of the time it's the adr tool the endpoint protection tool maybe or the antivirus tool itself creates uh, assign those severity level based on the category of the malware itself so uh, uh, if it is if it is about the malware uh, uh, then the endpoint detection or the antivirus itself give us the alerts or the priority of it but if it has been assigned by if it has been uh, notified by any other person then they can also assign the priority and if we are doing uh, analysis ourselves then in fact sock tire one team can also assign those priority and then assign the incident to the sock tire too so based on that the priority is decided for uh, every incident so but if you look at the tire 2 team i mean when when i worked in uh, you know when i worked in incident so i based on the priority itself we start working with it so if we have the high priority incident uh, we might have to leave the low priority incident or the medium priority incident and start working quickly on the high priority incident so that that's how we have to really you know switch it around so yeah okay got it sure so can you tell me about uh, any security security incident that you have worked on uh well uh yeah i mean there have been many uh but uh, the one that i recently worked on was wasn't that complicated but uh you know uh i'm not sure if i give you the entire detail of it but uh uh just to give you an analysis about how i dealt with it uh, uh recently uh, we encountered a malware in the network so i got the hash of the data a hash of the you know, that payload and then i checked the uh, hash i performed the lookup on the virus total to understand if the threat really exists on it um uh, it was proactive analysis i was I, i looked at certain suspicious files so i did the virus total lookup and um, uh based on that i checked the uh checked the information about if it how many antivirus have have detected this as the malicious payload and then i uh, uh i i then looked at the system itself uh, i performed some analysis about what are all communication happening on to the system because it was uh it was found to be infected machine so i run the traffic analysis uh to understand uh, what are all the communication happening with the external network if any and then um uh i actually looked at the edr tool then on the edr then uh, uh use the same hash file and understand i try to understand uh, if there there is any other system which is in which has been impacted by the same malware so that i could get the better understanding about the impact of uh, that outbreak and um, i got to know that there wasn't any other system which was impacted so i worked in isolating that computer that pc uh, and isolating it from the rest of the network so i worked on it i, I isolated that uh, system from the network and then i i i made sure that i informed to the it team to format that machine and uh, you know and uh, they formed the entire machine and after a couple of days we you know we we brought the system back to the network as well so that was the uh, entire analysis i also worked in uh, creating the report at the end by using different timelines so it was an it was a it was a malware basically and i worked in anal analyzing how exactly it came in so it came in through the uh, phishing email itself from one of our hr uh, hr team member and uh, as you can expect it was like a resume uh, the file was about the resume and cv or something like this so that's how it entered the network and that was the very recent incident that i worked with so yeah
Great. It was a good, good example. Sure. All right. So um, thank you so much, Javin. So it's now time for the detailed explanation. And I'll share my screen for that. And um, OK. All right. So here we go. Um, uh, as you can see, this, this explains uh, the incident response process. And as I said, uh, there are two main uh, incident response framework. We first have the NIST, the NIST framework, and the second is the SANS framework. Okay. Uh, the first step in the incident response is about the preparation step. Now, this is where you prepare your team. Uh, you know, you make sure all the tools are installed, all the team is ready, the workforce is ready. The process has been defined, the security incident severity level. Uh, you create the playbook as well about what would uh, what would you do if this uh, this kind of a malware has been detected or what would you do if the DDoS attack has been detected or what other team member you will inform to. You will classify the asset. Uh, you will actually perform the asset management. You will assign the... Uh, priority of every asset. So if you remember, I told you about how to prioritize the incident. So that's a part yes. of it. And then you establish the communication. Uh, how, how, what would the communication channel be? Uh, the escalation matrix. Okay. You will define the escalation matrix. Uh, who would be the uh, accountable person and everything. Next, the detection. This is where uh, the tools come in, uh, you know, the SOC tier one team, uh, tier one team come in because their job is to monitor the sign of any incidents. Uh, you know, they look at the incidents and collect the data on tools like SIM and uh, EDR as well. So they help in uh, detection. They collect the evidence uh, like system IP address, attack information, and everything. Next, if the uh, if the incident has been detected by the EDR or the SIM tool, now it's a job uh, it's a job of our tier two team to isolate the network. Okay, sorry, not isolate the entire network, isolate the computer. Okay, isolate the infected machine. So this is where the, in the containment phase we isolate the machine. But usually in some of the situation, we first perform the digital forensic as well in order to understand. Uh, I mean, in uh, at the same moment of time when you isolate the machine, you also try to understand what's the overall impact. You perform the, you know, you perform the uh, uh, impact analysis. Uh, you block uh, certain traffic by creating rules, firewall rules as well into the network you look at the evidences as well so that's that's the phase uh, that's the containment phase next we have the eradicate phase so this is where you will identify the root cause you will perform the patch you will update install the patch you will probably format uh, the machine or maybe remove the malware uh, to be very honest from my experience uh, from from my experience, uh, removing the malware doesn't help because uh, the malware can reside in the bias as well. So that might create a problem. So format is the best choice on those situations. Okay. Installing the patches um, and uh, yeah, that that's the part of the eradication. Next, we have recovery. That's where we perform the restoration part. We look at the, uh, you know, we look at how the recovery could be done. Uh, we bring back system into the network. Uh, and uh, finally, we have the lesson learned about what we have learned, uh, what new rule we need on the network, uh, you know, and what new tools we require uh, to avoid such kind of attack from the in, in the future as well. So this is the incident response process, which is very, very similar in almost every organization. All right, so this is all for today. I hope uh, I, I hope this was useful for you. If you have any questions, uh, guys, if you have any question about this, uh, you know, about this mock interview, do let me know in the comment. Um, uh, do let us know how we can improve it further. And if you have any specific question in any specific interview question, 
do let us know in the chat we'll try to cover that up in the next or in the upcoming uh, mock interview sessions as well till then keep learning this is rajnish gupta signing off